Hello everyone and welcome to the Yvonne Priest Show. I am Yvonne Priest, your little ray of darkness. And today we are going to be speaking to Canadian artist, also known for the Quiet Room Bears and also, whoop, he's got one, <laughs> also <laughs> co-host of The Real Ramblers with his brother Bill, Lee Howard. How are you today? I am great. How are you? I am good. I am surprisingly up on my day off and yeah, I'm here. That's <laughs> amazing. I'm not. I'm glad I could be here. Alrighty, so today we thought we would speak about one of our favorite horror movies ever, A Nightmare on Elm Street. So, Lee, where did that love yeah. for Elm Street start for you? Um, it's funny. I, there's so many people I know that love Elm Street as well have like such similar stories. Uh, so, uh, for me, the first one I saw uh, was Nightmare Two, uh, which I I've got such a, a love for Nightmare Two, and I'm glad that it's like. Uh, these days has more of an appreciation like a lot of older movies that people maybe didn't like back then like halloween three people yes. back then were like what a piece <laughs> of shit but now people kind of love it right yeah um so uh i was probably about 10 years old uh uh back in oh god uh 86 or so 1986 um and uh my older brother bill who who i do the real ramblers podcast with uh, he, uh him and i were babysitting uh, one of our nephews and he was like i used to be kind of scared of i was only 10 right so i was kind of scared of horror things but i kind of i liked monsters and stuff as well so um he was like hey let's put this movie on it was like a sunday afternoon and i was like what is it and he's like nightmare on elm street 2 and I was like, is it going to be too scary? And he was like, it's the middle of the day on a Sunday. You'll be fine. <laughs> and it was like a switch flipped in me. And it just like, it, it it just turned me like, I just, I wanted more. Like I just, I loved horror from, from that point on, but especially Freddy. With me, um, we always had horror movies in the house. Once a week we did like the, the trip down to movie land, got our, got our weeklies and everything like that. And one day my parents were watching A Nightmare on Elm Street. So I've walked into the room like, they're watching a horror movie. And my dad's like, no, 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 no. You can't watch this one. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, it's a horror movie. It's fine. And I think my dad more let me watch it just to pretty much say, if you get scared, it's going to be on you. It's going to be your own fault. Right. So that's not on me. And I thought Freddie right. was great. He was smiling. He was laughing. He was having a great time. It wasn't oh, yeah. maybe about two years later, I actually realized what he was doing and where he was when he was doing all these things. And I was petrified up until probably about 11. Okay. Yeah, How old so were you when you first saw it? Four, maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, probably about four. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I tried watching it again at 11. And right. I did pretty well. Then I got to uh, Tina's death. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, turn it off. Turn it off. I can't, nah, I'm done. Then about yeah. an hour later, I'm like, I'll give it another try. I turned it back on. And Nancy's mum's on fire. No, nah, turn it off again. <laughs> Next year, yeah. I tried it again. And then after that, I just loved him so much. And this is a reason why I love him and Wes Craven so much. The first yeah. villains actually scare me. Nice. It didn't yeah. happen, it happen and it's like, Freddy is, is kind of the only villain that can really, it sounds goofy, but stick with me, uh, that can that can kind of exist in our world, because like you're not going to find a, a Jason Voorhees in the woods, you know what I mean? You're not going to find a Michael Myers out on your street like that level of, of Michael Myers. But it's like Freddy exists. Like I know people that have had actual nightmares about Freddy. Same. So it's like, oh, it's it's it, you know, it can actually affect us. We can actually have nightmares about this guy who attacks you in your nightmares. So it's just he's he's just the most effective horror villain. Anytime. Anytime I've had any non-horror, because I've got these horror figures just here, so I'm looking at them right now. But anytime yeah. some non-horror person said, oh, he's like everyone else. I'm like, don't you fucking dare. No, he's <laughs> not like everyone else. Because you have no idea. You can run from Jason. You can run from Michael. You can't run from Freddy. You can't not sleep. You exactly. have to sleep. Exactly. Yeah. Even if your brain makes you go to sleep without you realizing, you're going to come across Freddy. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's That's what's so scary I think about Freddy is that it's like sleep is inevitable. You, you can't, you can't escape it. Cause exactly like, you know, uh, you don't want to get killed by Michael Myers. Don't live in Haddonfield. <laughs> you know, there's, there's ways around those. Uh, don't want to get killed by Jason. Don't go camping. Exactly. Uh, but it's like, you can't, you have to sleep. So 
You're I think fucked. That's a, I think that's a reason why I also like Candyman because he's kind of on the same level as Freddy because he exists yeah. here as well. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. love Candyman as well. I mean, you oh, know, he- it, 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 like Candyman is, you know, okay. Everybody's got their favorites, of course, and that's totally valid, totally fine. Some people are him. more, yeah, oh, nice. That's amazing. Uh, uh, you know, like some people are, you know, Jason's their favorite. Uh, M- Michael Myers, wh- whoever, Pinhead, and that's uh, and I love Pinhead too. But it's like for me, Freddy, Freddy is above them because uh. I mean, one, you know, he talks, <laughs> you know, not that, I mean, obviously Candyman and Pinhead do too. Uh, but I think also uh, Freddy's origin is so much crazier than the other horror icons, you yeah. know, just like everything from from how he was conceived, that horrible story with Amanda Kruger, like just the worst possible thing to happen to a person. Uh, and then, and then, you know, Freddie being born out of that. And then just with the, the, with the parents and the being a child murderer and, and more as, as, you know, it's kind of insinuated, but not right said in the original movies. Uh, and, and then coming back in dreams, like, it's just, it's such a cool and creative backstory behind, mm-hmm. you know, like Jason's great too, but it's like, he was a kid who drowned and then. I guess he didn't drown because he's still alive and oh, now he's a zombie or something. We don't know, but he's still cool. Like that's awesome. But you know, I don't know. Freddie's there's so much more to Freddie. And and that's why for me, he's top tier villain. I think this is why you can buy it as well, because yeah, if you have Jason, he's like, Oh, he died. Then how come he's a fully grown person where with everything with Freddie, you're like, yeah, well he was born or conceived in a horrible way and was just raised awful just every little bit of mythology they added to him you just you you actually could buy it for him absolutely yeah yeah it's it's very uh i don't want to say it's more like him and and the movies are more consistent because it's like with each movie there is kind of more silliness yeah you know what i mean it's like uh but you know like with jason again it's yeah he was a kid but i guess he did survive and and now he is a zombie or whatever. And then Michael Myers, obviously, there's like so many <laughs> branched off storylines and, and stuff like it was a cult. It was this. But Freddy has kind of been like pretty consistent with who, what he can do and who he is. And even if they obviously in each movie tweak some of the rules of of Freddy and whatnot. But it, I don't know. I feel like it's he's just more of a his story is more consistent in a way. No, I definitely find that because when I watched the remake, which <laughs> let's not talk about that one, but when they <laughs> added certain things about apart from him killing kids, they actually well, he didn't kill kids in that one. He did things to kids. I was like, yeah, I have a feeling that was attached to the original story, but it didn't need to be said. It was kind of creepy enough just knowing that you just took kids, tortured and yeah. killed. And I actually yeah, got yeah. angry when they added that in. I'm like, you added a level of grossness. Why we didn't need. Why'd you do that to my boy? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like killing kids is pretty. That's that's bad <laughs> enough. You know what I mean? And 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 if I remember right, uh, uh, Wes Craven, I think in the original, uh, like concept of the first movie, there was it was maybe outright said the extra bad stuff he was doing, but there was I think like some stuff in the news, uh, like a big news story that happened and it's like terrible and shocking and the worst possible thing in the world uh so i think they kind of scaled that aspect of of freddy back and they're like let's just focus on the child murders because yes. <laughs> like that'll be enough you know yeah. and yeah it is kind of insinuated you can kind of see it in freddy in the other movies the the just his he's gross towards it's so funny that it's like we love freddy but it's like we know what he is but we still love you know that's the kind of the goofy thing with with uh with movie villains you know what i mean you can still love them even if they're terrible <laughs> i also think with freddy it's because you actually get to see him enjoy what he does and no one else you get to see that with yeah 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 because he yeah, just, it's like he, i don't know if michael myers is smiling behind there <laughs> he's kind of like fucking i'll do whatever i want you're gonna but how are you gonna stop me you can't kind of yeah thing. so yeah absolutely so you're in a world that he you know dictates and he manipulates so yeah he's loving every minute of it Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's what's kind of, like, so fun to watch. Like, Freddy loves, like, 
just torturing people uh, psychologically too, you know, because I mean, even when in the first movie, it's like, you know, he could have killed Nancy right away. He could have killed <laughs> Tina right away. And it's like, obviously for a while, they'd been having nightmares. Like we don't know how long it was since they started having nightmares to like Tina's death, let's say. Yeah. Uh, but for a while, like they were, all the kids were talking about it. And he maybe could have like the first time he popped up in their dreams could have killed them, but it's like, he liked toying with them and 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 you know it's the fear that he, that he was after right yeah it's like building up the fear so he actually could have the strength to get them yeah yeah which and then i know that that's kind of a thing they added in the in the later movies too that the it's it is like yeah the fear and and, and stuff like that and but i mean i guess on the first movie they kind of touched on it too it's like it's the energy that you give him yeah that makes him strong and that's how well i was gonna say that's how nancy defeats him but it's and as much as i absolutely love the first elm street the whole like last third of the movie is very it's so like wait what happened so none of that happened <laughs> you know what i mean it's so yeah. like like oh marge got killed on the bed no oh, wait no so that was all a dream so it's like oh wait what the fuck happened then like at what point <laughs> did it did it turn into a dream and you know like because it's, like, it's like that point where like a dad rocks up and then like the mom's on fire. She's gone into the bed. Then Nancy's like, mom, where are you? I was like, wait, so did that happen? Yeah. I, I, it's what, like, what I, I don't, I don't necessarily, I mean, it's, I'm sure there's like a billion fan theories on, you know, what actually happened in that house and in the end of the movie and what was real and what was not. Cause you know, obviously if, you know, when Nancy's dad comes over and there's like the fiery footprints going up the stairs, it's like, well, that couldn't have actually happened because yeah. it, it was she was dreaming like because Freddie popped up and it's like he only exists in dreams. So it, it's so, I you know, and I'm sure they left it vague on purpose. Like uh, he, Wes Craven knew what he was doing. The guy was a genius. Yeah. Um, But it is very, you know, even now, all these years I watch it and I, I still try and think like, OK, at what point does just the dream start and the whole rest of the movie is just, it didn't really happen. Mm. Like in, in reality, it happened in a dream, obviously, but. How do you feel about that deleted scene about Nancy having an older sibling who was one of Freddie's. Oh kids? yeah. 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 I, I remember that. I think the first time I saw it was, uh, I can't reach it, but I have like a two VHS uh, uh, copy. Uh, I, I made it my nice. mission to buy all the original movies on VHS. Um, and uh yeah there was that that scene where marge was like all of you kids had older brothers and sisters uh and it's like oh shit um that's crazy I, I can see why they deleted it because how could none of them know you yeah. know like it's the you you know as a parent if i was a parent and i lost a kid i wouldn't you know i'd have pictures of it and stuff you know and it's exactly. like there's jeremy uh he got killed um r.i.p jeremy um but uh like it was it, it was a cool idea that that you know they lost other this like they had siblings and stuff like that's even crazier honestly to, to think about it would have been cool to see even if they had mentioned that like glenn had an older brother that died or something like that that would have been a, a cool thing to have in there yeah but um it, it did make sense though as to why out of all people nancy's mom had the glove because when she shows it to her, like later in like in this movie, you're kind of like, wait, why of all people, why do you have this? And then I thought, oh, maybe yeah. she took it because if she has it, it doesn't implicate any of the other parents because, you know, they could be investigated over Freddie's death and whatnot. But I thought, well, yeah. out of all people, why does she have it? And that made it, made yeah, it that's, make sense. That's what I always kind of took away from that is that because Donald is a cop and I'm sure was a cop at the time that the, the mob <laughs> killed Freddie um that you know he's a cop <laughs> so he's like if we just take the the evidence like the the murder weapon and stuff we'll we'll just all put it away that way it won't show up somewhere else as evidence and then you know a case could maybe be opened against the parents or whatever yeah um because uh i mean and we know from part three that they stole the body as well uh so which again i think was just kind of like a uh you know they're making more movies so they're just kind of like adding lumps onto the lore you know that was the thing about part three that i always thought was funny too with uh uh 
<laughs> like when Freddy's skeleton somehow comes to life and it had it had his <laughs> glove on and I'm like wait where where how did what 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 <laughs> why does he have the glove like you had the glove in your house how did it all of a sudden but it's like when you try and start picking apart like there's a skeleton running around you can't really you just have to like <laughs> okay sure yep he's got it yeah just I'll let it go. Into everything. yeah so that, that but that, that's one thing with horror that you love you just kind of like something weird happened just let it go just don't think about yeah, it. it's it's, like, it's not that I'm deep. Buy into the, yeah, if I'm gonna buy into the fact that there's like a dream demon stalking people, you might as well just be like, "Cool, I'm along for the ride." Yep, well, I buy into everything. <laughs> but yeah, um, def- yeah, with the mythology, I really feel like everything did actually add something to it. It really did just make him. It was just you know making make you know proving that you know all monsters are human kind of thing because if it makes sense, yeah, he like he was human. He just he he was made to be a monster with the way he was treated, the way he's dad was and what yeah yeah i mean it's like i in a way feel like he was because yeah you know it's kind of like you look at like uh uh, the rob zombie halloween where it's like michael myers became who he was because of like his environment and his shitty greasy parents and all that stuff uh but it's like freddy i almost feel like was like evil from conception you know like obviously his uh being raised by the foster parents and alice cooper and (laughs) whoever else (laughs) um you know obviously that 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 didn't help things and and uh, but i just i kind of always feel like freddie like immediately was just like a being of evil yeah the whole way but i think that's how it actually really should be as well just making him just evil from the get-go it's like going off to a different i'm going on a tangent to to halloween when you have michael he's just born bad but yet you do the remake yeah. and they gave him a reason. You're like, he didn't need a reason. It was scarier without a reason. Why'd you do that? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I still liked the Rob Zombie one for what it was. You know, I'm, I'm usually actually very pro remake. As long as it's like something new and cool, then great. You know, uh, not the Elm Street remake. I didn't like that at all. No, uh, it made me angry. It made me really angry. I had a friend <laughs> from Canada, mind you, who actually walked out of the cinema, like yelled like, this is bullshit. And he just like left the cinema. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, I just, I feel like they approached it all wrong, and it's like you know, Jackie Earl Haley is a great actor, he, and mm-hmm. it's like I mean, he did the best with what he was given, but it's like the script wasn't very good. Just I don't know, it just you know, it, it didn't, it didn't work. I like you know, like look at the Dawn of the Dead remake where they're like zombies and a mall, tell a totally different story, you know, or. Yeah. It's like the, you know, the Texas Chainsaw uh, 2003 remake I thought was great because it's like, you know, they take elements that you know, but do their own spin on it. Yeah. And I think that's what makes a remake really good. But the Elm Street one, they were trying to just like copy scenes that we had already seen, but in like, you know, like Freddy coming out of the wall, but it was like really crappy CGI. And then it's like, oh, here's the scene with Freddy in the tub, but it was all like soulless. It was like ai wrote the script or something you know it just it felt like it wasn't it was nothing it was that and there was also the way they did tina's death as well i can't remember it was, was her name tina in the movie as well yeah 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 it uh was. i i think so now well, i it forget just, it just, but it showed you just how much that movie sticks in my mind <laughs> but yeah the, the the bedroom scene for that just like flying her around just knocking into things and i was like as much as wes was like oh i don't know how i feel about this upside down room thing look how more effective that was than just getting Ooh. You know, um, I can't remember her name. Cassidy. I can't remember her name. Oh, yeah, Katie Cassidy. Katie Cassidy, yeah. yeah Katie just Cassidy. getting you just, like, yeah. flying around on a wire. It was, she deserved better than that. Yeah, Cassidy. yeah. And, and Tina's death in the original is, like, horrendous. It's so, it's it's still, like, so one of, like, the scariest kills in, in any horror movie, I think. It is. It's just, it's, it's crazy. Like, the way... Obviously, I mean, like any big nightmare fan knows, like technically how they did it with the upside down room and stuff, which is like bonkers to think that they even did that, you know, for a smaller budget movie back then, too, that they're like, we're going to build a room that we can spin around is like, holy shit, like, that's amazing. But I like how it, like even with them, they're like, oh, you know, we didn't have much money, so we did this. And we thought it was okay. Ends up being the most iconic things from the movie, which is so little tiny things they thought, oh, we might as well just do this. Look how effective yeah. was that wall scene above Nancy while she's sleeping. It was just pushing against up like some some rubber or spandex. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was spandex and it looks incredible. Like perfect. But just, yeah, it's just 
everything about it is like i there's there's pretty much nothing about the original nightmare not that i watch movies to pick apart anyway because i don't really i just like to enjoy movies yeah um uh there's you know i mean the, the the sequels i love all of them even though you know part six is probably my least favorite part five i know is not a great movie but there's still things about them that i can enjoy yeah you know and maybe some of it is nostalgia because I, I I think, you know that that holds. <laughs> when things are kind of in that nostalgia bubble, you're gonna love it no matter what. Uh so uh, but yeah, there's nothing about the first movie that that I dislike, you know. Even with the ambiguous ending, it doesn't bother me at all. I just think it's awesome. <laughs> oh no, it's it's honestly like it's my favorite horror movie, and um. Wes Craven created not only like, you know, a new horror villain, but he made a sci-fi villain as well without even realizing like a, kind of like a sci-fi fantasy one without even realizing because of how different Freddy was from everyone else. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's bananas to think that uh, they, they tried to shop it around to so many studios and all the studios were like, this is not scary. Like, you know, dreaming about a bad guy, like no one's going to buy into that. And it's like, you dummies, <laughs> you know like like obviously they didn't know at the time but it's like no no this is going to be the biggest thing of the 80s you know like freddy krueger is leg literally legendary uh and it's funny to think some people were like pass <laughs> it's funny to think it was picked up by new line cinema that was actually pretty new at the time itself mm -hmm. and look what they went on to freaking create you know lord of the rings and whatnot like oh my god <laughs> it's so nuts it's like yeah absolutely it's this. like you know <laughs> they call it the 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 house that freddy built uh and it's it's so true i mean it's it's crazy uh it's just it's amazing it, it's funny it's literally like that in west craven's new nightmare which i also really love um how when they're like do you let your child watch these movies and and heather's like every kid knows who freddy krueger is he's like santa claus or king kong or whatever and yeah. it's true i mean there hasn't been a new freddy movie in forever uh even the remake was like 2010 or something like that i can't remember sir yeah yeah and uh it's like just everybody knows who freddie is you know mm -hmm. did you go That's to crazy. did you go to nancy's house when you're in you're in california a couple of years ago weren't you for a convention no i haven't been there oh you haven't been oh no. for some reason i thought you'd I'm... been down because i was like did you go to nancy's house because i did oh you did yeah <sighs> i lost my did you shit. cry i guarantee i'd cry <laughs> well like <laughs> It's really weird to think that it's like, because it's just off um, Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard's like, you know, businesses and stuff. And you turn down, it's all really nice residential. And I'm like, okay, where is this place? And I see just like, what color was it? I think it was the red door at the time. And I was like, oh, there it is. And then yeah. I, took a photo of, I took a photo of myself in front of it. And these people are driving past being like, what was she doing? And I was like, you're either like tourist or you have no idea what this house is and shame yeah. you for not knowing this place yeah i have to imagine the people that live in that area like they have to know by now because so many people like most <laughs> most people i know like my friends in the states and stuff like they've all been to that house mm -hmm. um and it just it stinks now that uh that they painted the door black and they grew these like big hedges out front there's a gate in front of it now yeah mm -hmm. um so that kind of stinks um I wish, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I can understand, you know, like you don't want people like standing in front of your house every day, but when you're buying the Elm street house, you should kind of going into it. know, like, Oh shit, people are going to be showing up every single day. I better be fine with that. Yeah. If you're uh, buying the house, I think like, it gets sold for like, was it like a million dollars or maybe like one and a half. Yeah. I think you might want to look into its history and be like, why is it so expensive? Not just because it's in Los Angeles. Oh, because it's the most notorious house in freaking Halloween, you know, in horror history. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and then isn't it? Go on, go on. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I cut you off. <laughs> See, I'm talking about say... ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just around the corner from that house, uh, isn't like uh the Michael Myers house there or Laurie Strode's? How one of them? I, I can't. No, maybe that, both. That is further away. That's in Pasadena. But the oh, okay, uh, Halloween okay. house, it actually got moved from where it was because they're going to demolish it, and someone went up to the person who's going to bulldoze it saying, I will pay you twice what you're getting paid. If you don't demolish the house, ended up getting it kind of gone through like the, um, I guess you call it the local council or something like that in Pasadena, okay. got it heritage listed, got it moved across wow. the street 
from where it was. Oh, wow. Okay. So now if you go in front of the house, it actually has a plaque saying it's like a part of like Pasadena's history. Right. Okay. If you stand in front of it, you can see what was the hardware store. Which is okay. Crazy. Yeah. So it's, it's really weird. You turn around and go, oh my God, that's just, there's the whole of, you know, like there's wow. over there. But uh, that house, it's now, I'm pretty sure it's a business now. It was a residential house. I did have a sign saying, please don't come on the property. You can take photos, but don't come on the property. And I was speaking right. to a friend of mine at the time. He was there and he's like, don't go on the property. Oh, sh- I'm sorry. It's happening. And he took a couple of photos of himself. But, but <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You bought that house. You're going to know. You've seen it places before. Long right. Before yeah. you bought it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how many more times am I going to see this house in my life? Probably never. I'm taking a picture and then I'll run away. <laughs> Well, it's like the house that um Laurie was sitting in front of with a pumpkin in Halloween. They just leave a pumpkin out now. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. See, it's like yeah. that, that, that is what I would do if I had a house that was, you know, used for something famous horror, you know, like I would really oh, yeah. I'd play into it. Because you you just know that that everyone like loves that, who loves it, really loves it and wants to come by and see it. So it's like, why not give those people a treat? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now. This is a question I've been wanting to ask you because I am incredibly jealous that you get to be friends with him. How did you meet Mark meet Mark Patton? Because I am so jealous um, that I know him. <laughs> it's uh, there he is right there. Yes. Um, uh, I so it's okay. So especially because Nightmare Two was the first was the first one I saw, the one I loved growing up. I always defended it when people like shit talked it and stuff like that. Same. Um, and. Uh, so, oh Jesus, this is probably 13, 14 years ago back now, more maybe 15. I don't know. Um, I can't tell time anymore ever since COVID happened. That's like, yeah. I've lost concept of space and time. <laughs> um, so, uh, I was on Facebook and, uh, I saw like Mark Patton, uh, just like listed, you know, like friends that they're suggesting or something like that. And I didn't know if it was actually him or just like somebody, you know, like a fake page pretending to be him. So I just like add friend and then I wrote him and I was just like, um, hey, I don't know if this you're actually Mark Patton uh, or not. Uh, but if so, like I'm a huge fan. Uh, I've loved Elm Street 2 since forever. And I just I think you're a great actor and I think you're great. Uh, and then he wrote back and he's like, yep, it's actually me. And uh, he's like, thanks so much. And I was just like, that's so awesome. And then, uh, and then he friended me back, uh, or well, or accepted my request or whatever. And, uh, because he's an artist as well. And at the time, uh, this is before they did that, uh, never sleep again documentary, which kind of brought him back, which is the best documentary ever. Yeah. I, 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 you've, okay, good. I've got, a, I've um, got that and the, um, the nightmare, not, 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 we're talking about nightmare on street. I've got that and the Friday the 13th one also great yeah um but it's like for that documentary it's like they had to they couldn't find him so they had to like get a private investigator to like where the hell did mark Patton go because he you know like left uh hollywood and and uh had a little store in mexico where he's living and um and yeah he's an artist as well so we would talk about art every once in a while and uh we kind of like built a little bit of a friendship and then there was um one day where uh I can't remember what the post was about something about art and dreams or whatever. And, uh, I mentioned like a painting I just did or whatever. Uh, and I was like, if you want to like, check it out, it's in my, you know, album of artwork. And, and then he wrote back and he's like, the painting is great and stuff, but do you make those bears? And, uh, at that time I had only made maybe 10 quiet room bears. This is, this is the very first one that I made, uh, back in 2001. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, I make those bears. Do you like the bears? Do you want a bear? I'll give you a bear. Uh, because I just wanted him to have one. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I'd love one. So I was like, holy fuck, this is great. And I, I sent him a bear and, uh, he, he got it. And he, in his, the store that he had at that point, he made like a little video and was like showing it off and stuff. And I was like, ah, this is amazing. <laughs> um, and it's like, I didn't ask him like, Hey man, could you show off my art for me? Uh, but he's just such a nice amazing human being and um yeah and then uh there was we were talking one day and there was a convention just outside of boston uh in the states and he was going to be a guest at it and uh it's funny because i i had literally this sounds like totally made up but i had a dream the night before that i went to a convention and he was there and along with a bunch of other elm street actors 
like specific ones. And then I woke up the next day and went on online and saw that he was going to be at this convention and all the people that I dreamed about were also going to be at that convention. And I was like, Holy shit, what? That's crazy. And I wrote him and I told him and he's like, what do you need? Like a brick through your window? Come down here. And I was like, for real? And he's like, yeah, this, here's what we'll do. Cause he, you know, he had a table, he was signing things. He's like, bring your bears and some art and stuff and sit at my table with me and you'll be my featured artist. And I was just like, what? <laughs> like I couldn't like for real. Uh, so I was like, okay. And uh, I made a few more bears and, and I had t-shirts made up and stuff like that. And at the time I was like still kind of new to selling my art and especially the bears. So I was like selling them for like really, really, really low prices. Yeah. Uh, Cause I was also just like, nobody's going to want to pay me money for these. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> here we are 20 years later and I'm still making them. Uh, <laughs> the bears are my full-time job now. Um, so, so I, I brought a bunch of bears down and, and, and like met them in person finally, which was amazing. And uh I was like, I don't know how much to sell them for. And he's like, sell them, sell them for like a hundred dollars or something. And I was thinking like, there's no way people are going to pay a hundred dollars. And it was like on the first day, people came up and they met him because they loved him. And he's like, oh, this is my featured artist, Lee. He makes these bears. And then somebody's like, oh, these are great. And I, I'm talking to them, they're like, I'll take one. I'll take that one right there. And I like looked <laughs> over at him and he just like wink, winked at me. And I was just like, holy shit. So he's always been so great with just like, promoting my art and promote and just other artists too and just promoting other people too uh because he's just that nice of a guy um so yeah just just since then we've just become like just good friends and i'm feel so lucky and fortunate is the bear that you gave him in the background of the screen queen documentary or is that like a different bear yeah that was a different bear the bear i made him was like the eighth bear maybe uh because uh, they all have like session number session eight uh yeah. and uh uh i don't i don't i'm not even sure where that one i don't know if he still has it even um and i'm almost at like a thousand bears now uh that i've made like a thousand of them over the <laughs> over the years yeah it's crazy um so i made that one specifically for the scream queen documentary which also is amazing yeah. um and uh, so I made it like Elm Street 2 slash Scream Queen themed. So it's like it had a tiara and it had um, uh, kind of like just like a Freddy skull coming through the stomach of it. Like like it happened to Jesse in part two. Yeah. And I had uh, I put a couple. Um, there was like a bladed finger kind of coming out of the crotch area. And I, uh, you know, like that classic scene in part two where all where the coach is being attacked by all of like the balls, like the soccer balls and the, so I put like a couple little basketballs down there below the <laughs> finger. Um, so yeah, I made that just for them to, uh, to, to help promote. And I did some painting, like an artwork uh, painting um, for their Indiegogo when they were launching that to, to support the movie. And um, it's that, is that the glove though, with like, the tiara. Yeah. The glove holding the tiara. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think when you buy the, scream queen uh lp the soundtrack i think it comes with a print of that oh nice um, yeah yeah uh and yeah and, and uh, the painting i did for them they it was like a reward that somebody could get on their uh fundraising thing so yeah i just that's that's the story of how this dude that i watched when i was 10 years old that i thought was awesome is like a friend now oh that's cool because I do like he does follow me back on Instagram and we've had a couple of interactions when I've like oh, watched stuff awesome. and he shares it too. Cause I remember uh, there was, I posted on my Instagram, my sister messaged me out of the blue saying you've lived in five different decades. Let that set in. And I was just like, Oh my God, I have. And I posted that uh. oh, daily affirmations from my sister. And Mark was like, you've lived a great life. And I'm like, Oh, I don't think he realizes this is how me and my sister play. We just roast each other like all the time. And I'm like, do I go <laughs> yeah. explain my sister's not mean. She's just, she's just herself. She says she's out. We play, but, um, <laughs> Oh no, just like the interactions I have had with Mark is just, I love him to be. It's like, I'm, I was so glad to see him come back watching screen Queens. When you see him sit in front of the camera, I was just like, there you are. Oh, yeah. I love you so much. And I'm so yeah, glad was... to see him back i'm so glad to see that he actually no one holds anything against him for nightmare 2 not being a successful that it's become yeah. a cult classic that everyone just loves totally. him it's just i love i love that it's so loved now 
Yeah. It's that that just brings me so much, uh, so much joy. And um, and it's like I've met like really great friends in my life now because of him, like um, Bill Nugent, uh, who was uh, at that convention. And he's like Mark's assistant in Scream Queen. And Bill and I are like amazing friends now. And my friend Jim Martin and uh, uh, Deandra, um, who you you maybe know, Deandra Laser, like sa- Sassy Sledgehammer. Yeah. Um, we're like BFFs. Like I've uh, so many people that I'm like really close to and are, are, are just like dear friends are really because I met them through Mark or we all met each other through Mark. So, yeah, he's he's like the 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 friendship linchpin <laughs> in all of our lives uh, i'm like i'm so jealous like every time i see mark when he smiles he makes me smile you know when you watch like Shit's creek and you get like david's happy and you get like oh i like that yep. when I see mark and i'm like oh, look at him just i want to totally yeah, yeah. like daily affirmations just make my day brighter mate like i i, I adore him i really do Shit's creek another fine canadian product oh yeah yeah. Another, actually what one thing i was actually i was looking at tubi and i saw that they actually have um tales from the crypt keeper the cartoon which i think was canadian as well which i used wow, to watch that's as a right that was yeah, yeah i completely like, I forgot I about that yeah that so much as a kid <laughs> like it's amazing yeah but um so the first movie aside what is your favorite sequel i'm gonna sound like a basic bitch and say number three okay Dream well not, i mean i get it i get it like yeah. it's three three is like a perfect sequel it in is. that they you know have the original story but they they build on the world in such a i mean that's where we found out about amanda Kruger and you know and we get to see the hospital and stuff they they and actually it's funny nightmare on elm street three is where like i got quiet room for the quiet room bears um, because oh. when the kids start getting all crazy and they get put in the quiet room, like that's, I stole it directly from nightmare three, um, <laughs> uh, uh, artistically borrowed. Um, but, uh, no three is like a perfect and, you know, Nancy came back, which was fantastic. Uh, RIP. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, my God, no, you're going to spoil I, the movie for everyone. <laughs> yeah, if if people haven't, haven't seen, seen it by now. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um she dies oh my um, god yeah i know i totally agree like it's as much as i love part two and it's it's like just just under part three for me they're they're almost equal because i love them so much yeah but as as a movie i think three does the best job with just building the the the, the story and and just adding so much more to the lore of of freddy and uh even even though there's like a a a walking skeleton for some reason um and that's a funny thing that uh you know people always a lot one of the complaints that people sometimes have about part two is that they're like it broke the rules of nightmare on elm street because freddy came into the real world and that's like somehow like against the rules or whatever even though at the time they didn't really have set of rules exactly but i would always point i would always point to that like if you are like two broke the rules because freddy is you know at the pool party the fuck did a skeleton get up and start walking around like there are no (laughs) rules it's like it's just like they're making shit up as they go um you know it's funny even like uh uh my fiance she had never when we got together she'd never really seen all the movies so i was just like we gotta watch the nightmare on the street movies please love them but it's like she didn't grow up with them so she's looking at them from like current eyes so it's like she sees like how cheesy they are and stuff yeah where i would be like no they're not but it's like deep down i know they are um but it's like you know we we see part four at the end where you know alice holds up the reflection and freddie sees his reflection and like that's what kills him and she's like hold up in part three wasn't there like an entire hallway of mirrors where freddie could like see his like reflection (laughs) like a hundred times over and i was like yeah but fuck you're right <laughs> like it doesn't make sense they just kind of make it up each time but uh yeah no i i agree with you three is probably it, right under the first one it's so good it was um, something about the introduction of like the hypnosil which i thought was a really cool idea of having like that dream present idea. but one yep. thing that really irritated me is nancy's gray streak changes to the other side of her head I, how and did it nobody does my that? head in every time i see it and i was like guys I know you do reference photos from previous movies. You obviously had like a mirror image 
And I was like, didn't not over the head. They go, pretty sure it's on the other side of the head. That's what I thought. Oh. I'm sure. I'm sure she's answered the question. I, I I bet like at conventions and stuff. But I'm still like, yeah, it blows my mind how when they were putting the gray streak in, she wasn't like, oh, oh, oh guys, guys, wrong side, wrong side, this side or whatever, you know. And they were just like, all right, the gray streak's in. Let's do this, guys. <laughs> you just imagine like you know she gets it done. I think it's on the other side. No, it's fine. And then Robert sees it. <laughs> Is that on the other side? No, it's not. It's fine. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> yeah. Like you're remembering it wrong. Like, am I? <laughs> now, uh, not to not to talk bad about the movies and stuff, but what would you say is your least favorite? Probably Dream Child, just because yeah. like, I, I know you know it's just it's it's silly, it's campy, it's cheesy, it's the eighties. It's what we love about it, but just <laughs> being like, oh, now my baby is dreaming and bringing Freddie out, and I was like. Mm-hmm yeah a bit of a stretch on something that's already a stretch kind of thing yeah yeah it's like you can only stretch like a rubber band so far before it just snaps exactly. <laughs> and it's kind of like like the 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 logic uh of that one and it's like there's there is something about part five that i really like and i don't know why um it's like i like that they you know it's kind of gothic and and they tried to make it a little tried to make it a little (laughs) bit darker you know like at first when amanda's in the you know like the opening scene like with the with the maniacs in the hospital is like awesome yeah you know and um and really creepy and like dirty and gross and uh uh (laughs) and when like you know even when amanda shows up and like (laughs) freddie from the baby crawls into the sweater and then grows up and for some reason has one really long arm and leg i don't know why but he's still kind of in the shadows and stuff and it's like okay it's kind of neat but i totally also get it because the rest of it like makes zero sense yeah uh yeah uh, you know and the i mean it's like they in in that never sleep again they talk about they i, I like that documentary because they they're really honest with what doesn't work <laughs> you know and uh and i mean they rushed like part four made so much money Mm -hmm. that they're like another movie quick like we have to have it in theaters in under a year and it's like whoa that's like you can't rush this stuff you know exactly but studios like making money so they were just like we want we want money now uh and then you get nightmare on street five uh (laughs) And uh, yeah, there's there's a lot that that I can understand that his makeup is not great in that. His makeup is the worst in six, I yeah. think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's you know it's funny because uh, some people when they're thinking about the entire series, some people don't include Freddy versus Jason. Some people do because it doesn't really follow. The, I, mean, I don't know. Um, you know, I don't know. What like what are your Freddy versus Jason thoughts? I actually quite liked it. I liked the idea of them to the kids. It looked like they were trying to erase all their past friends who had died by getting rid of their obituaries by actually being like, no, we get this. We're actually hiding Freddie. This is how we're going to protect you. It's the only way that we can do it. I liked that. It was just kind of just gore and blood for the sake of it. Let's just bring these two together. Let's just have a face off. Annoyed we couldn't get an actual resolution in the end, but then again, you're going to piss a big bunch of people off if there actually was a proper, you know, winner to that. So, yeah, but I, I, yeah, I liked it. It was a bit of fun. I feel like it was because, I mean, we all know how many like times they tried to make it and they went through like a thousand different scripts and stuff like that. And I feel like this is probably the best. I mean, because it's just such a hard premise, I think, to do because Freddy exists in dreams and Jason doesn't how logically can you make that happen uh and i think that they did the best they could with given that you know they tried to like you know keep in things like the hypnosil and yeah like if we i like that idea too of like if we just erase freddy he can't come back because no one can fear him yeah um and so there were certain things i liked and uh but it's like i i don't love it i don't know it's like freddie barely kills anybody in the movie i don't think he does i don't think he has one single kill he almost did and freddie took her in the end uh yeah 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 Yeah. like he killed i know that he killed that one dude's brother 
in uh, they showed it in the flashback. Yes, yes, that was um, the only kill he had. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. He did. He killed that one. That's how he, he did kill that one kid. Yeah. Uh, who he killed both brothers, I guess. Yeah. Um. So, but otherwise, he he should have killed way more people. Um, exactly. I I don't normally encourage murderers, but you know when it's Freddy, it's like man, you should have killed more people. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like having that one character in there that was like Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. It's like it was a little, it, it just it got a little too silly, I think, yeah. for me. Um, uh, so like I don't, I, I like I love that people love it because it is just like a fun, goofy movie. But it's like Freddy's like dropping elbows on him and stuff, and I'm like, what the shit is going on? Like, uh, but it's like it's just like a silly, fun movie. Yeah. I think uh, I, I think for me, Freddy's Dead is maybe my least favorite. Uh, just his, I don't love his makeup in that. Um, there's just certain I, the whole the whole aspect of him having a family and I thought and of having, Freddy's. I, that's him before he was burnt, if you can say it. Oh, nice! I have I have one of those too. Not that specific one, but I do have one of of like Robert England's face. Oh, um, and look what that was under. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> I completely I forgot that you got that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for supporting the local artist. Uh, <laughs> local, <laughs> or, well, local, local to me. <laughs> uh, on a, on a universal scale. Um, but uh, yeah, just uh, the, the fact of like giving Freddie like a family, and then yeah, having him like he lived at fourteen twenty eight Elm Street, and I was like, what? If I was the cop <laughs> who like killed Freddie, I wouldn't be like. Ladies. Thank God that guy stopped murdering our kids. But that house has some nice square footage. Like, <laughs> look at these railings. I sh- I'm going to move in there. I'm going to move in. No one will think anything weird. Um, so, like, I didn't love that kind of weird aspect. And and it was, uh, you know, again, it's just the dream logic was goofy. You know, like, uh, for part three, it was awesome that Kristen had a power and she could pull people into dreams. And that was like a kind of like a holy shit, like nobody has been able to do this before Mm -hmm. but in freddy's dead it was just kind of like the dream world was like just a place anybody could go you know like when he's killing the video game kid which was a ridiculous scene they were all like let's just like you meditate and just show up in his dream hit me with a piece of wood and i'll go unconscious and i'll also be there it's like what the fuck is going on here who wrote this (laughs) um (laughs) like none of this makes sense but there's also still stuff I like about it, you know, like I, I like the 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 idea that the entire town is like just insane adults. Mm-hmm. That's such a neat idea. It was such a weird, very Twin Peaksy kind of kind of thing. So it's like there's even even the movies I don't like, I all still watch forever because yeah. it's a Freddy movie. It's you know? a Freddy movie. They yeah, even even with the 3D glasses part. Oh, actually, I've got the Never Sleep Again right here. Nice. Uh-huh. amazing amazing cover art too um oh, yeah it's really good uh uh have yeah it's it's so... robert? have you met yeah him? you know what um i met robert uh also like 14 15 years ago and he was in toronto uh at um there was a movie he did called jack brooks monster slayer and um uh, there was a screening there and I got to go to a little meet and greet kind of like the cast and crew were, I think, I can't remember if it was before or after the movie, but like having drinks and stuff like that. So uh, uh, someone I knew uh, who worked for the distribution company was like invited us to go. So I got to meet him there and it was like, it was bananas because <laughs> we're having like a little bit of a conversation and I can't even remember what we're talking about. He puts like his hand on my shoulder and he's like talking to me about stuff. And I was just like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in my head, I was just like, (laughs) like trying to tell myself, like focus on what he's saying. Like try and remember this moment. Don't like piss your pants and freak out. Um, But he's so nice. And then I just last summer, uh, I drove to the States and with my friend, Jim, uh, me and him and his son went to oh god horror hound was it horror hound uh i might be getting the name of the convention wrong because my memory sucks but uh robert was there so i got to talk to him again and uh yeah he's just he's super super nice too he's he's a real uh chatterbox <laughs> i i hear really great things about him he actually was here in australia he was doing some conventions and he's gonna oh, cool. come to my favorite theater the Astor in the city which is this beautiful like 1920s art deco 
um, theatre. And they're like, Robert England's going to be here and he's going to be there for a presentation, I think, for the last, the last, it was, I can't remember what the, what the movie was called. It wasn't a Nightmare on Elm Street one. It was actually like a different one he had done. And they're like, oh, okay. he'll do a meet and greet and he'll, you know, sign autographs. And I went out and bought a book called, I think, the, the Elm Street Legacy. Like, I actually, like, bought a book oh. for him to sign. Wanted to get a photo. I'm like, oh, my God, I get to meet him. And then he cancelled. He didn't come to Melbourne. He went to Sydney and then he went home. And I was like, I was so gutted because I'm like, I don't know how oh. he can come back to Australia. It's a 15-hour flight direct. I don't see Oof, him during oh wow. that too much. And, yeah, I was so gutted because I'm like, I need I need to meet this man. Like, I need to. Oh, man. So I need to get back That's... to America and be like, Freddie, I need to. Yeah. <laughs> so gutted. <laughs> So have upset. you met any of the other cast at all or like it's no. obviously like i don't know how no no like we'll, look we'll, we do get conventions here like i've um you know the last one i went to that's when like one of the twilight movies was out so there was some of like the little like the kind of like the little known actors from that so i've seen some from stargate right. and just, um, yeah we like we do get the odd celebrity here but not as many as i'd like I just yeah i suppose like, it's, it's, it's such a long flight yeah yeah absolutely um yeah, it's. I mean, do you go to the states very often, or I, I've only been twice, so and I don't oh, see okay. myself doing that again for a while because cost of living. Mm-hmm, that's that's fun. <laughs> so uh, yeah, same same up here. Honestly, uh, I really wanted to go to a convention in uh, that just happened in March. The same one, Horror Hound. Yeah, Horror Hound. That's what it was. Um, because they had a really great guest list, but I just I'm like I can't I can't I can't afford that right now. So, but maybe I might think about there's another one in september with uh w- with a bunch of it's like an elm street kind of reunion um, oh nice so yeah yeah so uh it would be cool to go to that the one i went to last year it was like a nightmare four uh yeah a nightmare four kind of reunion so i met almost the entire cast of part four Jesus. um yeah like uh, uh lisa wilcox like alice and uh uh Brooke Thies, the bug, the the cockroach arm bug girl, who is super super nice, um, and weirdly enough, uh, I think she's like when I was talking to her, I talked to her a whole bunch. Uh, I think her family has like a cottage not far from like where I am in Canada, so like I would mention like local things, and she's like, I know that, and I'm like, what? Should we be <laughs> best friends? Um, but uh, yeah, just like most of the cast, uh, uh Dan, uh, from part four and five. Uh, and I mentioned part five to him as well. And he's like, yeah, I know it's not that, that great of a movie. And I was like, dude, I actually really like it. And I think like all you, I, I'm like, I think all everyone's acting was really good in it. And, and he was just like, Oh, thanks. And it was like, <laughs> he was shocked that anybody had anything nice to say about part five. Um, but yeah, it's, I've been really lucky to have met a ton of Elm street people. And it's like, there's not a bad apple in the bunch. Everybody's been so friendly, so nice. And if you do get a chance to go back to like a, a States convention, go to one that has a bunch of Elm street people, because like it's, you'll love it. And it's like, no one will let you down. Oh yeah. Like, no, I definitely need to. Cause obviously like that, I want to meet like Niv Campbell because I love scream as well. Oh, so, I'd, I'd yeah. love to as well. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I, I don't know if you can see my shirt, a West Carpenter <laughs> flick, <laughs> nice. uh, which I made this and it's on my, uh, my, my t-shirt site. Plug, um, plug. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I would love to meet the screen people. Actually, I met uh, Skeet and Jamie Kennedy at that last one uh, briefly, and they were also super nice. So nice. But yeah, I think the yeah. last person I met, completely like not none of these movies, was Barry Bostwick because it was they were doing a showing of oh. horror, and he was so lovely. Like I'm only five foot two, so I'm tiny. This man's like six foot something, and I was like. <laughs> you're so tall and he's like did you want me to squat down and I was like no no and then I was like actually I should have been like yes mayor of New York you squat down yeah, uh, yeah. in the end he wrote on like a photo it was like, was like give yourself over to absolute pleasure I know you have and I showed my parents like what does that mean he goes he just called me a whore it's fine it's all good <laughs> <laughs> it's from him though so it's, it's fine. From, yeah it's from him it's all good I only like, this is great. like this is like an embarrassing thing to admit, but I only saw Rocky horror for my first time, like all the way last year. Really? Like I'd seen maybe bits and pieces of it before. Of course I know the songs, but I'd never sat down to like watch the movie. So I watched it for my first time just last year. And it's amazing. I uh, now I, I totally get why everybody loves it so much. Oh, it's so good. See, like yeah. that was something I probably saw 
probably in my 20s and I felt like that was seeing things too late like Candyman I saw in my 20s too right and sometimes I'm like is that too late for me to be a horror fan saying I saw it in my 20s but then I'm getting close to 40 so yeah (laughs) yeah I I honestly I think like I there, there's a lot of like I, I love the horror community so much. Like I, I feel like because I used to do like cosplaying and was kind of in the comic book world and, and, and like convention stuff. And I don't, it, it's okay. And there's a lot of good people, but it's also it feels like I don't know, weird, competitive, and uh, I don't know. But the horror community, like I do a lot of, I, I do a lot of horror shows, and I love, love the horror community. Like it just, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of shitty people in it like there's going to be kind of gatekeeper gatekeeper people oh yes that was hard to say that that maybe would be like you haven't seen candy man by the time you're 20 you're not a horror fan or some horror shit but uh i feel like the majority of horror fans are just like we're like a family like yeah. I, I just and horror conventions i love love going to horror conventions because just everybody's just there to have a good time you know, and it's like you, it's it like you become friends with people like, you know, you, you see somebody wearing a Halloween three shirt and you're like, oh, shit, nice shirt. And they're like, yeah, man, Halloween three is great. And it's like, boom, you just made a friend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And uh, I love with the horror so, community. They also I like wearing T-shirts when I go to stuff like that. That's like it takes a fan to recognize. Like I've got a yeah. need a medical supply T-shirt. So but people see it, they're like, no, return of living dead. And I was like, Fucking yeah, you know, nice. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I, I love that too, especially yeah, the deep cut kind of. Like if I wore this Wes Carpenter flick sure, I know that there would only be a certain amount of people be like, ah, I know what that's from. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. Cool. Now, although now although there should be more people who know it because like I think Scream is such a staple. Like if you have, I think you people should have oh, sure. seen it before they were born, basically. Like it just should already just be in memory. <laughs> yeah. R.I.P. Wes Craven. Give us a couple of the greatest horror franchises. Oh, God. I ever. remember when he died. Um, a friend of mine, or the guy I was seeing at the time, he actually like messaged me. He goes, Wes Craven's passed. And I was just staring at my phone. And he genuinely wrote no emojis, no lols, was, are you okay? Yeah. Because I was just gutted for the rest of the day. People were like, I- what happened? I go, this person died. Did you know it? No. Get over <laughs> it. I was like, shut the fuck up. Oh, I'm not yeah. getting over it. <laughs> That's the thing with like, I, I cried when Wes, there's only two celebrities, two celebrity deaths that have ever made me cry. And it was Wes Craven and Christopher Reeve. Cause I'm such a huge Superman fan and, and grew up just loving uh, Superman and Chris Reeve. Um, and uh, yeah, I was just like on my phone and I, uh, I think, I, I don't know how I found out. I don't know if somebody messaged me and just like I saw it and I just started crying. Uh, Cause, and, and that's the thing with, uh, you know, some people will, will say that, like, you know, you didn't know him. Why are you, why are you crying? But it's like, when I wish I could, there's a really good quote that somebody that I read that uh, it's like, you're not crying because you knew them, knew the artist, but you're crying because the artist made you know yourself better or something like that. You know, like yeah. the, 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 the art and the films or whoever, the things that this person creates, becomes so much a part of you mm-hmm. that it's you know like i i am where i am with my art and with who i am as a person because of wes craven because of nightmare on elm street and uh yeah like it's just it just what he created uh shaped my life uh so like yeah it affected me <laughs> when he, and i cried when he died because it's just like it's such a loss because just yeah their work means so much you know yeah, like apart from him, me saying like he was like the first director and made a villain that scared me, it made me want to, you know, do that chase to find more and more after that. I'm like who else can scare me and whatnot? Totally. And just, yeah. When I was younger, I really couldn't be, like I was a chubby kid at school. So I'm like, I can't be a horror kid and a chubby kid. I can only be one. And I'm like, I'm uh-huh. standing out physically enough. I can't be the weird horror kid as well. So it wasn't uh-huh. until I actually went to Los Angeles Saw the Nightmare on Elm Street house, bought some stuff from like Halloween Town. People were like, oh, I love your bag. I love you have this. And I was like, I get to fucking be myself here. This is cool. And then after uh, I was home and I was like, you know what? If anyone says anything about like my Universal Monsters handbag, stuff yours. I'm so sick yeah. of having to hide this part of me. And everyone's like, why are you all of a sudden a horror person? And you're like, not all of a sudden. No, no, no. It was always. Yeah, like, I've always just been. Yeah. Saw it. I, I get it. I, I was, you know, like in, in grade school, like, you know, grade, like uh, grade, whatever, like four up to, you know, 
even in high school and stuff, but mostly like the 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 primary school or whatever you call it. It's uh, weird you I saying just, those like, words in that accent because I just I'm so used to hearing primary school in Australian accent. Oh, but then, gee. Like, being Canadian, you're in this you're in, in the Commonwealth, so it's all like the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we both have the metric system. We uh, yeah. <laughs> um get it together america jesus um but uh yeah i i loved horror too and like i mean i love comic books and horror but like i never played sports or anything like that i was like really short and i was like really skinny with like a big head i was like a like a walking candy apple you know and it's like i had like acne and uh so i was like the weird like horror kid i mean i used to <laughs> i used to tape pens to my fingers and like and draw <laughs> like draw like pencil like murals of freddy all over my desk and i was like the weirdo for it and stuff and you know kind of made to feel shitty because i didn't play hockey and you know that's practically a crime in canada if you don't like <laughs> if you don't like hockey um but i just i never give a shit about that stuff i loved freddy and i love monsters and uh i think it's crappy to make anybody feel shitty over something that they're passionate about and love so yeah i'm glad that 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 you had that moment of like fuck it oh yeah horror's cool it. and i'm cool and eat shit <laughs> oh i needed it i was working with a bunch of girls now granted everyone was probably about 10 years younger than me so that they liked kind of reminding me of that at the time and i went sure. out and bought like a ghostbusters jumper and i bought a um do, do you call a sweater a jumper in canada uh, no, sweater? we just call it a sweater. Sweater. Okay. Well, I call it a jumper. Yeah. There you go. And um, <laughs> I got a, a turtles one as well. And the girls looking at me like, I'd be embarrassed to be seen out with you if you wore that. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be out with you regardless of what I'm wearing. So I can't <laughs> kind of <thing>. yeah. <laughs> bad mouth my Ghostbusters and my boys in great. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Ghostbusters are great. But it's I like I I'm happy that like like nerd culture and horror culture and stuff is more kind of mainstream in a way now because it's more normalized so it's like you know uh more accepted kind of generally and 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 i i like that because then it's just going to create more horror fans and stuff out there which exactly. is amazing yeah where i currently work um we're really embracing like anime and stuff i'm not the big anime person i maybe like what like one called car captors from when i was a kid right but we are starting to get some horror stuff in so when we get those people in they feel kind of weird about buying like a horror t-shirt and I'll go, Oh, you know, do you like this horror movie and blah, blah. And then I start a big conversation that they don't usually get yep. to have with someone. Cause no one really cares about it. Like a girl was wearing uh, a Friday 13th t-shirt the other day. And I'm like, Oh, did you see that last year for Halloween? We had an it t-shirt, we had an excess one. And she was like, end up speaking to me like 15 minutes because she had someone to talk to. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. That's the horror. Again, the horror community is, is the best. I oh yeah. It. I love it so much. Well, yeah. thank you, Lee, for coming on to the show today. Hopefully people enjoyed our conversation. It wasn't really in-depth yeah. talking about the movie, but I think it's cool to actually talk about our experiences with it. So I thought sure, it was yeah, absolutely. All righty. So everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to link his page on this as well, and I'm going to put your Instagram in there and your TikTok. Sure. You with yeah, absolutely. million yeah, yeah. followers on TikTok. Jeez, I'm jealous. Yeah, my art, my my art TikTok has has one point one million followers, and my Quiet Room Bears has two point one right now. I've got like a thousand. It's crazy. crazy. <laughs> I've got like a thousand people, and I doubt anyone even looks at it properly. <laughs> Probably all people go. She got into a live for a psychic. Oh, boom, 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 boom. All these psychics start following me. <laughs> all right. Well, hope everyone has a great day. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>